Okay, so the objective of this lab is to calculate the thickness of the aluminum foil. As I explained before, if you have a malleable piece of aluminum, or for that matter, if I'm asking you to measure a stack of papers and give me the thickness of one piece of paper, I will demonstrate in a second that if you actually squeeze the um, caliper that we are using, you're not going to be able to measure anything. So you have to come up with a procedure that uses density. So that is the objective. The equipment used is the caliper. We only have one type right here, which is a me tutorial. If you flip all of this over, you are able to see the spec. In other words, how what is the resolution of it? So this should measure to 0 0.1 millimeters, which is probably not as good. And the instrumental error will be 0 0.2 millimeters. You don't have to worry about that right now. So the best measurement you can get, it's something with one decimal, and that's kind of illustrated here. This can measure in inches or millimeters. If you press the top button, that changes, um, uh, changes the scale and the units as well. And before you start measuring, you always have to make sure it's squeezed all together, all the way, and you zero it out. Okay, so it's all done. Okay, what else did we use? We used a ruler, and we used the units in centimeters. We use a digital scale, which is a Taylor scale. And we also use, let me see if I can move my thing. We also use a better scale that I found. It's a RCBS scale. This is actually for very fine um, measurements. And so I'm, I managed to get the grams with two decimals, which is great. So with three fix, sig figs. And particularly for this, you all also have a standard. So I'm gonna teach you how to use a standard because I don't have anything else standard in here. So this one has a pot and the pot has to be zeroed out. So you have to caliper and make it sure it's zero. Now the GM right there, that stands for grams. It's a little bit unclear right now. I cannot hold it by my hand all the time like that. So let me try. So the top one right here, Okay, the top standard, you can see this is a 30 gram and the bottom one is 20 gram. So let's say we start with a 30 gram, we put it in a pot right there. And we can see it's 20.98. Let me move that a little bit so you can see. 29 point, not 20, 29.98 or 97. So it's very, very close. So we have a small error right there. And let's see what happens if we put a 20. So 19. 0.99. So this would be actually very good for measuring the grams of the uh, aluminum foil. So let's see what is the procedure. <clears throat> and I presented the equipment. So that would be a good um, place for you to make sure you have all that equipment listed. I'm going to leave this here so you can see it. The rulers is in three um, in centimeters and I use three pieces of aluminum foil. And we kind of already used them <laughs> when we took the first video. I know they look kind of sad, but that's how they look like after we handle them. When they are brand new, they kind of look like this. And it's not any kind of aluminum foil, it's the heavy duty aluminum foil. So I'm gonna go over and show you. This is heavy duty aluminum foil. And the heavy duty aluminum foil has a thickness that is accepted, and I'm gonna talk about that when we get there. So essentially, the procedure will be, as you noticed before, we took each piece of the aluminum foil, and we measure the length and the width. I'm gonna put this, because part of your lab report and because it's the first time you are writing this down, I'm gonna go over it a little bit. I'm gonna move this scale out of the way, right? So here in a theory part, you have to explain why do you need to use the density? And so I'm gonna kind of give it to you right now, but you saw the demo I did, right? I took a stack of papers and I was trying to measure the papers just to calculate how much is the one piece of paper. So when you take anything that's malleable and you try to measure, no matter what instrument you're gonna be, no, if you start squeezing hard, you're gonna have a variation completely, a complete variation in the thickness. So this is not reliable. So you have to find a different way. This is why the formula of density comes into place, right? We're gonna learn more in a lecture. It's kind of interesting we do that before. Now watch what happens if I actually take the aluminum foil and try to measure the thickness. These are two pieces together, right? So when I squeeze it, 0 0.7, I squeeze it harder, I get a zero. 
So obviously it is not reliable. So you have to find a different way to express that. So the way this is done, imagine this is your piece of aluminum foil, which is nothing else that it looks, it's a rectangular prism. The density is defined as mass over volume. You're gonna learn that in a lecture. You probably already know that, right? But then you have to think who is the volume. So think about your phone case. Or think about any kind of book. Here's a rectangular prism, right? So a rectangular prism has a length, a width, and a height. So the volume of such a thing is area of the base, which is length times this times the height, right? And then what you do, you plug in this volume. It's multiple ways to do it, right? So you plug in this volume into the density. So then my new density becomes mass divided by volume, which is length, width, times height. So now you're going to cross multiply these, and you get rho times LWH equals M. And from here, you pull out H, which is nothing else but the height. And the height becomes mass divided by length, width, times the density. Now, you need to know that what's given to you in this is that the density of the aluminum is 2.702 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, pay attention to the units because you're going to have to pay attention later. And then in the very end, what I want you to do... Um, Calculate the percent of error. I'm going to teach that in a lecture, but for now, just know that the percent of error is the measured value. This is, in other words, what you get out of this experiment minus the accepted value. So any box, when you buy a product, typically a, a box comes here with all sorts of measurements, right? Unfortunately, they don't have the thickness on anything that's commercial for kitchen, but it tells you the length, the surface area, how many lengths in feet, um, but in a normal product that you buy for industry, you will have a spec. So I'm going to give you the acceptance value for heavy-duty aluminum foil in a moment. Just know that the percent of error is something you compare to a standard, right? So let's say if your standard is, uh, I don't know, 2 centimeters, and you measure something and you get 2.1 centimeters, you will have a percent of error. Very small, but it exists. Good. What do I expect in your next um, now the procedure. The procedure was, and I kind of showed you a little bit, I measured this twice. So I pretended we are a group of two students, right? It's a little bit too much light here. So um, in a group of two students, we measured the piece one. I measured the length and the width, and I put the masses here. Now how did I measure the mass? Because that's something I didn't get a chance to show you. So I'm going to zero this out again, just in case. So that's the reason my pieces of aluminum look so sad after I measure the length and the waist, because the only way to put them in a pot, and that's what you've done at school anyway, you have to fold them. And you have to fold them so they are stable enough to stay in a pot right here, and then to get your answer. So for example, here, this is 1.14 or 1.15, and that is exactly what I put in a table for you, and I'm going to go over in a moment. So the first piece of the aluminum foil, which is the one I'm holding, I'm going to unfold it right now. Right, so we measured, we measured the first length, 17.9, and respectively 10. So I put them right here, 17.9 and 10, and then the mass was 1.14. I measured the same piece again, pretending that I'm a different student, right, but I measured the other sides now. Imagine in a rectangle, right, you measure two sides on the right and then two sides on the left, let's say. And I got the following results, 18 and 10.1. And when I measured the mass again in grams, it was 1.15. Great. Now you do the same thing for the other two pieces. And I'm going to share the data in a moment. Let me move this out of the way. So what you have so far is for piece number one, we got the length, the width, and the mass in grams. What I did in the next step here, I did the average. So if you do the average of those two, you get a number. If you do the average of those, you get a different number, same for the mass. Now, applying the formula that we just deduct from the theory, right? What I expect to find the height or the thickness. I'm gonna have the mass divided by length, width, and density. If you put that in a calculator, or I highly recommend you use Excel. If you don't know how to use it, please let me know. I'm going to go over with you. So if you put everything in together, you get 0 0.002349. And those are in centimeters, right? You can actually check for the units. So now I have a number right here for the percent of error because I promised I would tell you what is the accepted value. So the accepted value 
of such an aluminum foil, and it's an industry standard, okay? It's 0 0.00254 centimeters. So in other words, in this case, only the first piece, I took that number, right? So I put it right here, percent of error is measured value. This is the experimental value. That's what you measured, right? So our measured value was 0 0.00. 02349 and it's absolute value of that notice that minus the accepted value which is this number right here divided by the accepted value times 100 well when you do that for the first piece you get this number which is very good honest to goodness that's a very good number uh, anything below 10 percent in um, school setting or home setting i think it's excellent so you got a seven point well, 7.52, let's say, if we round it to uh, three sig figs, you get a 7.52% of error, which is excellent. What you need to do more at home, so you can um, show me your calculations, will be for the next two pieces. So I actually measure the two pieces, and I put, I'm put i sharing the data with you, right? So for piece number two right here, I did two sets of data, pretending that I, we have two students measure it. So then we get the following values uh, for the length, for the width, and for the mass. Now what you need to do at home is do the average for them and then calculate the height or the thickness, right? Height means thickness in this case, and you're gonna get a number. Um, same idea here, you're gonna calculate the percent of error as well. So I'm gonna highlight so you don't forget to calculate that. Similarly, the same way, or my third piece of aluminum foil. And as you notice, each one is a little bit different. They don't have to be the same size. So same idea here for piece number three, I'm sharing the data. We measure the length and the width, and we also measure the grams. And even my um, not so precise, I would say, the Taylor scale that I use, the digital scale, even that one had a 2.0 grams as opposed to 1.92. So I use the more precise measurement right there. So. 18.2, uh, 18.1, 16.7, 16 16.9, and 1.92. I measure it actually three times just to make sure it's consistent. You will have to find the averages, and in the end, you're going to have three different averages. No matter what, because all of these three pieces come from the same roll of aluminum foil, your thickness here should be very, very close. If there's a difference, then you will have, um, in the end, you have to find the total average between them. Here, as I kind of put it here, find the total average of all the three pieces and put the number right here. That means you're gonna average out what you got here, what you got for the second piece, and what you got for the third piece. And that will come together for your final thickness. Because you want to average everything you've done in that experiment. It is not only one student, it is not only one piece. It was not only, um, one type of measurement. In other words, I used two different digital scales. I used, I used the aluminum foil that was not a perfect rectangle. So pay attention to what I'm talking now because that should be in your conclusion. Those are all fundamental errors that could happen. This is definitely not a perfect rectangle, right? I mean, if I have a perfect rectangle, then the sizes will be the same. Well, here happens to be the same, but here are not. They were as perfect as I could cut them. How is that? All right, so when you are done and you get your final thickness, I want you to compare that number to your accepted value. So you're gonna plug in this number right there, do everything in Excel if you want. If not, just show me how you've done it, put it in a table in Word or whatnot, and show me that, and have a percent of error. What do you need to discuss in the end? Well, you're gonna have to discuss in the end, clearly in the conclusions, why do you have this percent of error? I just discussed that with you. And how do you make it better? It, typically what I'm looking there is, hey, I have this conclusion. If my percent of error is less than 10%, that's a very good, very good percent of error for a school setting. But if it's not, you still have to discuss a little bit, what is it that brought the error? How come it's not perfect? Well, nothing is perfect, but then you have to explain. So this is in a nutshell, this lab, which part of it would have been covered in a lecture, but it's good for you to be exposed a little bit before. So don't forget um, to include all of this material in your lab report, and I explain even how to do it. And um, don't forget to list all your equipment, right? We talked about the equipment. And don't forget to list your theory. And the theory was, 
you have to explain why the density came into play. All right, thank you. If you have any questions, let me know.